Here we are, day two, Women in the World, and we just had a panel, and they have joined us in the Toyota Solutions Studio, and the panel was moderated by Elise Nelson, who is the head of Vital Voices, and we have two future presidents with us. We have Carl Walla from Cameroon, and we have Laura Alonso from Argentina. Your panel was entitled, Defying the Fear Factor. What is the fear factor in Argentina? Well, the fear factor is, within ourselves, I think, within women. Mm -hmm. And we have to skip that fear factor. We have to wonder why can't we be the presidents? Why can't we be the judges? Why can't we be whatever we want to be? And I think that we, have, we are escaping that trap. You know, history has put us in some places and we are starting to realize that we are really very powerful. Women have power. We vote, we, pex, we, we pay taxes, we raise children, we give birth. We are really very powerful and we can rule our countries and the world. Does the fear factor look the same in Cameroon? Well, the fear factor in Cameroon is, um, um, there, there is that element of it for sure, but there, it's a slightly more direct because uh, it is a country where uh, being in opposition to the government can mean that you get imprisoned, mm -hmm. can mean that you get beaten, that you get, um, you know, threatened. Um, so what in Cameroon it means, and especially for women, is overcoming that immediate fear. You know, people are more powerful than any leader. And this has been proven throughout history over and over again. Um, so for us, the defying fear means getting informed, getting educated, knowing our rights, getting organized, and acting. Because when you have people who are dictators in power, when you have people who won't respect the rights of the people, the only way to gain your space, to gain your freedom, is to take hold of your rights and to act on them. There's enormous courage here mm. uh, amongst these two women, but also among many of the women that you mm. work with. And this is, um, you know, th this is sort of par for the course for you, Elise, because Absolutely. Vital Voice works yeah. with w women like Waka and uh, Laura all over the world. Um, what is most inspiring to you about women in the world mm. and this, the forum this year? Um. Well, these women, getting the opportunity to moderate this discussion with them is very inspiring to me. But all of these stories, I mean, you know, there's so much courage of women on the stage um, today, yesterday, I'm sure, tomorrow. Um, so that's very inspiring. And I think really one of the only things or the greatest things holding us back is the fear in ourselves. And I think um, so often we meet women and we can just see that light in them, that leadership, that potential, and they don't see it in themselves. And I think the power of what we do at Vital Voices is that when they're together, they see it in each other. And that's very powerful because when other women begin to see it in you, you begin to see it in yourself. Um, it becomes a force multiplier, doesn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. Um, one of the things, you did, one more thing we talked about on the stage, the three of you, is how women lead differently. Mm -hmm. Um, can you speak to each that personally? And mm -hmm. I, frankly, you have this as well in your organization. You're a leader of your organization around the world. How do each of you lead differently? <laughs> <laughs> Who starts? <laughs> I think I think you should talk about the book, and then we can because sure. I think that, that it captures you know this different style of leadership. Sure. Well, you know, even I think, as and, and we're talking about Elisa's new book, which is out, which is called yeah. Vital Voices. Vital Voices: The Power of Women Leading Change Around the World. And it really takes you on a 17-year journey around the world um, as Vital Voices was founded. And what we began to discover is that across cultures and generations and ages and communities, women had a common way that they were leading change, and it was different than the way that men were leading change. I didn't say better. I said different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think that's important yeah. because I think that difference that women bring is precisely what our world needs today. You know, you, you look around the world and we see growing inequities and divides. We see countries trying to pull themselves out of economic crisis into recovery. We see people, you know, in the Arab world, for example, feeling very disconnected from their leaders but very connected to each other through modern technology and, you know, through going out into the square. So I think people are crying out for this new model. They're crying out for leaders who connect, who are motivated by making positive change that impacts people's lives, who are empathetic in the way that they lead, who cross lines that divide. These are all the themes that we've heard here at Women in the World, and this is the way that women lead change, and it is different and it is so desperately needed. 
How does that manifest itself for the two of you? For me, it's, it's really, um, it's interesting how in our world, sometimes when we um, oppress people or we deprive them of, of something, we actually create a strength or an opportunity. Most of our societies have left the job of taking care of human beings to women. We bring children to the world, we bring them up, um, we take care of families, um, we take care of the elderly. And what that means is that when a woman gets to leadership, she's thinking about the human being as a whole being. Economic growth is important. Um, you know, hitting all the development numbers is important. But we are also thinking about, are people OK? Mm -hmm. Are they well? Are they happy? Do they feel like they live in a just society that gives them full opportunity? And because we are in charge of taking care of human beings, I think we see the possibility of justice more clearly. We see the possibility of a society where everybody has opportunity, where everybody has the potential. You know, we, we, we spend a lot of our time enabling people to go to their full potential. Mm -hmm. as women. Mm -hmm. And so when we get to leadership, we see that possibility for our nation. Yeah. And I think that's what makes the difference in women's leadership. And for me, you know, <laughs> uh, I chose politics at some point in my life and people chose me to change politics. And I recall that every minute in my life because the biggest challenge is not to disappoint my people. And it's the most important thing every day, every minute, when I say something or I think or I do something, I am asking myself, am I doing the right thing? Because they chose me twice for something. And it's because they trust me. And I will never, ever betray that trust. That's the way that I live. So, extraordinary. Well, thank you all for being at Women in the World 2014, and thank you for joining us in the Toyota Solutions Studio. Thank you. All the best. Bye-bye.